Sewing Stories, Harriet Power's Journey from Slave to Artist, written by Barbara Herkert and illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. Sewing Stories, Harriet Power's Journey from Slave to Artist. See that sweet baby girl lying on a quilt her mama made? What could she be dreaming of? On a plantation near Athens, Georgia, Harriet's mama worked from rise to set while Harriet slept between the cotton rolls. Harriet grew up watching women carding cotton, spinning thread, dyeing and weaving cloth. She learned that wild indigo made blue, hickory bark made brown, and cherry bark made deep red. She studied strong stained fingers. Her heart beat to the booming of the loom. In the evening, the women gathered together and cut flower sacks and worn clothes into suns and moons and stars, lions, birds, and elephants for applique cloth legends of Mother Africa. Harriet listened to their voices hum throughout the quarters late into the night. Little Harriet placed cotton filling in the quilt. She held the pine knot light high. I won't nod off. No, ma'am. She was part of a sacred tribe by a crumbling fireplace. In the middle of the night, Harriet learned to sew stories. On Sundays and holidays, sometimes the master gave permission for a quilting bee. The women lowered wooden frames from cabin rafters. Long-limbed Harriet crawled under those big frames and watched needles dart through cloth like silver dragonflies. She thought, someday I'm going to sew a magic world. When the women finished sewing, making two or three quilts in just one day, folks gathered for peach pie and ginger cake, collard greens, and barbecue. While they gobbled up the grub, Harriet traced quilted shapes with her finger. Her mama smiled. Child, I think it's time you had a needle of your own. Yes, ma'am. Strong-limbed Harriet helped the women sew. Afterwards, she danced at the frolic. Horsehair fiddles, cheese box tambourines, and sheet bone drums formed the band. If Armstead Powers could capture Harriet beneath the quilt, he could claim a hug and a kiss. Harriet slowed her pace just a little bit. Sure enough, Armstead caught her with a story. Harriet and Armstead jumped the room together when Harriet was just 18. Soon, Harriet became a mama. She named her pretty baby Amanda. Pray we stay together and don't get sold away, she said. Harriet wrapped Amanda in a quilt she made and held her tight as Civil War cannons fired. The army from the north marched into Athens. The Union soldiers told the slaves, you're free. Hallelujah, free at last, Harriet cried. But trouble didn't end with the war. Oh no, poverty raced through Georgia. How would Harriet feed her family? Amanda, Alonzo, Nancy, Lizzie, and baby Marshall, five hungry faces, 10 bare feet. Show me the way, Harriet prayed. Harriet took up her needle, turning snips of calico, an old pair of dungarees, into cloth stories that warmed her children and lifted her from hard times for a while. You gotta take what you've been given and make something out of it, she said. Harriet saved every extra nickel. The family bought a little farm, a horse, a plow, and some seed. Now, plates of catfish steamed on the table. Fat vegetables ripened on the vine. The children grew like the cotton Armstead planted. Cotton mills popped up all over Georgia, and folks celebrated good times. Athens announced its own party, the Cotton Fair. Folks were abuzz about the craft exhibit. 
who would win best in show? I reckon the good Lord gave me a skill, Harriet said. She snipped calico as pink as watermelon. She cut strips of cloth as green as key limes. Harriet sold stories of Cain and Abel, Jacob and Jesus too, familiar stories that formed pictures in her mind. She stitched Bible folks in scenes where polka-dotted camels, elephants, and ostriches lived together in a fabric land. Folks at the cotton fair gathered around Harriet's quilt. A young woman, Jenny Smith, offered to buy it. How could Harriet part with a piece of her heart? No, ma'am, not for any price. Dark days came a knocking when the price of cotton fell. Harriet sent word. Would Miss Smith still like the quilt? Oh, yes. Harriet climbed into an ox cart, and as Armstead drove her into town, she cradled that quilt like a child. Harriet told Miss Smith, you can have it for ten dollars. I only have five to give, Miss Smith replied. I reckon that'll do, owing to the hardness of the times. Then Harriet explained each story sewn within the squares, like the lyrics of a song spun into cloth. She climbed back into that ox cart, and as Armstead drove away, her lap felt as empty as her heart. Now, folks were talking. Could Harriet make another story quilt? Oh, yes. She pieced together Bible stories and tales of real events in the sky. A meteor shower, bright lights burning in the night. It was snowing fire, Harriet said. On a day called Black Friday, the sky grew dark as midnight, and all the cows and roosters went to bed. Harriet delivered the quilt to some ladies in Atlanta, slipping their dollar bills into her apron pocket. Her heart was heavy. Another beloved sold away. Still, it pleased her to hear the women's praise. Harriet never had much money. She didn't own much property. It was a struggle to get by. Her cloth stories lifted her to another world where suns and moons, animals and angels danced together across a fabric sky. One day shall I reach heaven and one day shall I fly.
Visit artforthecreativesoul.com to find great art resources featuring Harriet Powers.